My name is Kainton the Genius, and today we'll be continuing with tutorial 3 on our MuleSoft tutorial with AnyPoint Studio. So let's get started. This is a procedure for tutorial 3. Remember, this is a procedure based lesson, so I'm keeping all the procedures for you in case you miss out something. Remember to subscribe if you've not subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss anything. Alright, so let's start by logging into AnyPoint. So at this point, I'd like to keep the two windows open. Okay, at least like this. Good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to uh, anypoint.mulesub.com. So this is the, the login page. So since you've created an account in the previous lessons, so we can now log in or sign in. So if you sign in, it's going to take us to the AnyPoint platform. So this is a central platform where you can actually build, manage, and create integration solutions. So the next thing we are going to do is to create an API specification. So to do that, we need to go to the design center. So just click on start designing at this point. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger, 100, okay, perfect. So we are going to the design center. So learn, learn, learn that we design APIs using the design center, all right. So I'm going to create a new API and I'm going to do that by clicking on create. So at this point, there's a number of ways we can create an API. We can create a fragment. We can uh, also create an API specification. Now we want to create an API specification. So just click on create an API specification and then give it a name. Since this is tutorial three, let me just call it tutorial three. Let me call it the MuleSoft tutorial tree. All right, so MuleSoft tutorial tree is name, and I'm going to click on Start with API Design. I recommend that to complete RAML OAS support mocking interactive docs. So for beginners, basically, it's good we use uh, Start with an API Designer, and let's go and click on Create. So at this point, it creates an API uh definition for us so what we are now going to do we are going to write the code to actually build this api so we are going to write the api specification in a language called raml now you are not going to learn this language you don't unless you just want to spend some time learning it so the raml stands for restful api markup language and it's a language to define api specifications so this language defines an API containing both the metadata, the endpoints, and the data that the API is going to expose, as well as the data it needs to function. So I'm going to copy the code and paste it. We are not going to write it since this is actually a demo. So I'm going to copy it from where I have it. And also, if you look in the description box below this video, you see a link to you see a link to where this code. Is. So I pasted the code, and at this point, I like to maximize this uh, the screen. So now this code, I don't want you to worry so much about it, but I want you to take note of two things. When I pasted this code, it provided these two endpoints. So Design Center actually understood this RAML code and extracted these two endpoints. So endpoints are simply like the URL or URI that you can use to consume an API. So if you have an endpoint, you simply uh, make requests to those endpoints and you're able to get the data that the API actually exposes. So in this code, we have an API that contains list of, that exposes list of products and allow you to search for a product by providing the product ID. So if you do slash product, you have the list of all the product, but if you do slash product slash the product ID, and that is why product ID here is enclosed in color braces because it's optional. You might actually choose not to provide it. So in that case, you simply have the list of API, the list of products. So what I'm going to do now is to test this API. Any point actually provides a way for us to test our API uh, without actually having to deploy it to the cloud or to production. So that test environment is called mocking service. So let's uh, enable mocking service by flipping on this button by the upper right side of the screen. So at this point, mocking service has been 
uh, enabled. And also take note that if you are writing a RAML code in here, it's actually being saved automatically. Uh, so you don't really need to worry so much about uh, saving. But if you've not published it, then it will not actually be available. All right, so what we are going to do is to try to um, test this API to see how it goes. Now I've turned mocking service on. I'm now going to try to click on product ID. Good, so product ID, and I'm going to click on get. So at this point, we have, if you've used REST application before, you can see something similar to this. So you can drop down, we have security, it uses basic authentication. But now we have to click on this button, try it. Let me see if I can shift this. Okay, good. So we are going to click on this button, try it. So when I click on try it, it gives us this request URL. Okay, so this is where our API will be available online after we publish it. Now I have authorization method. I'm going to specify the, let's just say MuleSoft, and I'm going to use password MuleSoft as well. Okay, so again, I need to enter the parameter and this parameter, product ID, let me try product ID of two and I'm going to send. Okay, good. So we have 200 okay, meaning that the request went successfully. So at this point, we have brand and point identifier. So this is actually the results returned by this AP, the REST API made REST uh, REST requests made to this API endpoint. So we have actually succeeded in building an API specification and we've actually uh, tested it and it's working perfectly. The nice thing I want us to do is to publish it so that we'll be able to access it from the browser from anywhere. So what I'm going to do now is to publish this API. So to publish this, I'm going to switch off, switch off the mocking service, switch off, fine. And I'm going to then publish it. So to publish it, um, I think there are two ways I could actually go from here and then well, maybe, uh, okay, let's just, let's just follow the simple way. Let's just click publish to exchange. All right, so we have new software tutorial tree. That is the name of the API and I'm going to publish it to exchange. So it's published. So if I go to exchange, from anywhere, I could access exchange and get access to my API. As you can see, MuleSoft Tutorial 3. If I go back to access list, yeah, I can see a number of APIs I actually created, right? Good. So now again, I would like to show you that this API is now available online. So if I go to exchange and go to Tutorial 3, I'll try to get the endpoints of where I can access this uh, API from. So if I go to endpoints, I go to product overview. Oh uh, no, okay, no, this is not. So, okay, I could actually go to share. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I need to figure out is the endpoint where this API can be accessed from. Okay, so and see, okay, let's go back to access list and I'm going to click on this place. Okay, so you can see this endpoint at this place. If I copy, I can always use it in any browser to try to access this API. So let me see, let's try it in Internet Explorer and see if we can have this API access, access to this API. So I'm going to paste it here. So it's likely going to ask of authentication maybe So if I sign in, it's going to give me access to this API. So I'm, I'm going to actually stop here. One thing I'm going to let you know is that we've actually created an API. So if you log into MuleSoft at uh, any point, if you go to Exchange, if you go to Exchange and go to API Manager, you can actually search for and find the API you've created. I'm going to stop here. And then in the next lesson, we continue and see how we can uh, build a, a uh, use, use any point studio that we downloaded to build APIs locally on our system.